Ritsa here. I don't know if anyone can hear me. Hello? Councillor Prutza, can you hear me? Uh, just barely. Put your earbuds on. This is what I this is what I'm doing, right? All right, can you hear me better now? Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, Mr. Chair? Good. Okay. I think we're ready to go. You guys ready? We're good to go. Good morning, everyone. My name is Councillor Mark Grimes, and I'm the chair of the Etobicoke York Community Council. The clerk has confirmed we have quorum, so I'd like now to call meeting 31 to order. Welcome back, everyone. It's kind of like the first day of school. Today's meeting is being held uh, with the members of council and city staff participants both by video conference and in person at the Etobicoke Civic Center in council chamber. The Etobicoke Civic Center is once again open to the public, and anyone is welcome to attend the meeting in the council chamber today. The public may con Continue to participate electronically by video conference. This meeting is also being live streamed online at youtube.com backslash Toronto City Council Live. The clerk staff have connected remote public speakers to the meeting by video conference, and there are public speakers in the room with us today. The list of speakers can be viewed online by visiting the Tobago York Community Council page at toronto.ca backslash council and clicking the speakers box for today's meeting. We ask everyone for their patience with any delays and technical issues. Members, the city clerk has provided all agenda materials on toronto.ca backslash council and on the CMP, the clerk's meeting portal. Clerk's IT staff will be available to members in the chamber and remotely if you need help with any of your devices. As part of each agenda item, we'll ask members to raise their hand or unmute their mic if they wish to question the staff or speak. I will then create a speaker's list and we will call on members when it's their turn to speak. When voting on item or a motion, I ask that members ensure they turn on their video and raise their hand to indicate their vote. Members, this is a paperless meeting and I want to remind you that you still must submit and approve your motion by email. Staff are available at cetcc at toronto.ca to help with motions. Although we're in different locations meeting remotely today, the committee would like to acknowledge the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of the nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. Are there any declarations of this under the Missile Conflict of Interest Act? If you do have an interest, please raise your hand or unmute your mic and indicate the item number and the nature of your interest. Seeing none, we can now go through the agenda. see that on there. Do I have a motion to confirm the minutes from February 24th, 2022? Moved by Deputy Mayor Holiday. All in favor? Opposed? That is carried. 311, Jane Finch Initiative, Ideas Report and Phase 2 Direction. Councillor Peruzza. Yeah, morning, uh, morning, Mr. Chair. I'm happy to move uh, the, the staff recommendations uh, that are before us. Um, unless, of course, anybody has any questions or would like to. Um, yeah. I'm in your hands, Mr. Chair. Council Proust is moving the staff recommendations. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 31 2 2189 Lakeshore Boulevard West Official Plan and Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application Preliminary Report. I will hold that down in my name. 313-2939-2943 Bloor Street West Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application Preliminary Report. Uh, Councillor Ford, do you mind moving that on my behalf? So moved, Mr. Chair. Councillor Ward moves the staff recommendations. All in favor? Opposed? That is carried. EY 31.4, 5251 Dundas Street West Official Plan and Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application Preliminary Report. Councillor Ford. Can so you moved. Staff Councillor Ford moves the staff recommendations. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 315, 955, 975 Western Road, official plan and zoning uh, amendment application. Uh, Councilor Nunziata. I'll move, I'll move the staff recommendation. Councilor Nunziata moves the staff recommendations. All in favor? <laughs> Opposed? Carried. 
EY31.6, uh, 933 to 935, the Queensway Class 4 Noise Area Classification. I'll hold that down to my name. EY31.7, application to remove a private tree at 3 Sonoma Way. Uh, it's time for 9.30, so we're fine. Councillor Ford. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, on this item, uh, I'd like to move an alternate recommendation uh, to strike the staff recommendation and uh, grant a request to permit uh, to remove one privately owned tree um, with the condition of replanting uh, five and or cash in lieu. Okay, Councillor Ford is striking out the staff recommendation and he has the amendment on the screen. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 318, non residents of Mount Demolition Application 971 Weston Road. We have speakers on that. 319, exclusion of Ward 2 from Chapter 925 Permit Parking. Councillor Holliday. Thank you, Chair. I'll move the staff recommendations. Deputy Mayor Holliday moves the staff recommendations. All in favor? Opposed? That is carried. 3110, accessible parking spaces April 2022 in Wards 3 and 5. Councillor Nunzietta. So I'll move the recommendation. Councillor Nunziata moves the staff recommendations. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 3111, parking amendments, Kinsdale Boulevard. Councillor Ford. I move staff recommendations. Councillor Ford moves the staff recommendations. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 3112, parking amendments, Manitoba Street. Councillor Ford. Uh, happy to move staff recommendations. Councillor Ford moved the staff recommendations on my behalf. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 3113, parking amendments, Marine Parade Drive. Council Ford again. Uh, move staff recommendation. Council Ford moves the staff recs. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Nancy, you good? Going too fast? 3114, two turn prohibitions, 2525, 2555, 55 St. Clair Avenue West, and 2565 to 2595 St. Clair Avenue West. Council Nunziata. I'll move the staff recommendation. Council Nunziata moves the staff recommendations. All in favor? Opposed, carried. 3115, temporary road closing of Islington Avenue and parking regulation amendments to 2022 Canadian Open. Deputy Mayor Holliday. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'm going to hold that down. Uh, there's a, uh, I believe, a technical amendment coming. We need a few minutes. You want to try it or you want to speak to it? Or you... No, no, I, just a technical amendment. Should be easy, but we need a few minutes. So we're going to hold it. Okay. 3116, always stop control. Thursdale, Thoroughdale Avenue and Teeter Street. Uh, Councilor Nunzietta. Yes, I'll move, um, I'll move the staff recommendation. Councilor Nunzietta moves the staff recs. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 3117, pedestrian crossover, Prince Edward Drive South at Bernice Avenue. I think there's an amendment to go with this. If Councilor Ford, you can move the amendment and the recs. Yep, uh, happy to move that, Mr. Chair. It has to go to Council, apparently. We'll move it to Council. Are you okay with that? All in favor? Opposed, carried. Item is amended. All in favor? Opposed, carried. 3118, appointment of board uh, public members to the Utopia York Community Preservation Panel in wards one, two, three, five, and seven. Councillor Ford. Uh, move staff recommendations. Councillor Ford moves the staff recs. All in favor? Opposed? That is carried. 3119, changes to the business improvement area boards of management. Councillor Ford. Happy to move the recommendations. Councillor Ford moves the staff recommendations. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 3120, appointment of public member to the George Bell Arena Board. Councillor Nunzietta. I move the recommendation. Councillor Nunzietta moves the staff recs. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 3121, designation of fire routes and amendments of Chapter 880, fire routes. 66 to 74 Jutland Road. Councillor Ford. I move staff recommendations. Councillor Ford moves the staff recs. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 3122, designation of fire routes and amendment to Chapter 880. Fire routes 400, the East Mall. Deputy Mayor Holliday. Thank you, Chair. I'll move the staff recommendations. Deputy Mayor Holliday moves the staff recs. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay. So moving right along, let's go to uh, two. Nancy, we good? You're good? Uh, I'll just pass the chair to uh, Councillor Ford, uh, 2189 Lakeshore Boulevard West, official plan and zoning bylaw amendment application. I'll pass the chair. I have questions to staff. So, um, 
on this one here, uh, Mr. Mizzy, this is Park Lawn and Lakeshore. Everyone knows the ESO station down the corner. Uh, the developers come in for a pretty big tower here, and they've gone and appealed this before we even had a chance to have a public meeting. Uh, to you, Mr. Chair, yes. The preliminary report was dated March 28th, and after it was submitted, an appeal was made by this applicant. So we provided a supplementary report just to, it acts as an information report. We'll eventually have to come back uh, with requests for directions on that appeal. Okay, but this seems to be happening more and more. These developers are you know, just going right and appealing before they even have a public meeting. Is that, that's kind of like, where, where's this coming from? I don't understand it. This is like... Uh, Mr. Chair, in this case, the applicant has certainly stated they want to continue to engage with us, continue to work in process. We are seeing some of these across all four districts. It likely relates to the summer recess, council recess, that kind of time frame. It's hedging their bets a bit. It protects their interest to appeal now and not next winter. Okay. Those are my questions. Uh, so there's a supplement report that has been moved this. So, Councilor Ford, I'll be happy to move the supplement report and the. Uh, can, can can I can I also ask a question along that because because I've had this happen to me as well. Isn't it also um, the fact that um, that um, you know we're sort of being seen as a bit of a nuisance as it relates to development? They could just go to the tribunal and get the densities they're looking for um, without you know a whole lot of you know uh, peer review without having to deal with the public, um, without having to deal with us. Um, uh, is, isn't that also um, uh, in part the case here? Because I've had several of these uh, just go directly to the, uh, uh, to the tribunal and you folks then basically come back with a directions report. Um, and, and, and I get it, that there's, at that point, there's not a lot that you can do, um, you know, because, you know, they have all their, uh, their ducks in order from all their uh, consultants and, and those kinds of things. Uh, isn't that in fact the case? Isn't it because the so, some of the planning rules have been changed uh, that they are treated far more favorably down at the at the tribunal than they are having to go through the process? Through the chair, the opportunity to appeal uh, an application is a right under the Planning Act. I personally think that from what I've observed, it's mostly protect our interests in terms of timing down the road. Most applicants want to work with the city and reach a settlement under these circumstances. You may have seen at council, last couple of councils, and certainly going forward, a lot more settlement reports have been coming forward in terms of requests for direction. It's always in an applicant's best interest to work with the city. I think it's just to hold to be in advance of the time frame it, it takes to potentially have a hearing, should we not work this out? No, no, I understand that, and I and I understand that you're you're being really generous as well. I'm looking at the application, for example, on Tor York Road in my ward. Uh, it's in an industrial area um, uh, on a two-lane industrial street. Uh, you know, it's an outlandish density. It's six times coverage um, on on a on an industrial road, uh, they came in, they basically tolerated um, a public, uh, a preliminary hearing, which you folks uh, scheduled uh, lickety split. Uh, and then no sooner do we have the, uh, the preliminary uh, public hearing uh, that, uh, you know, I got a call saying, look, uh, you know what, uh, uh, we're just going Councilor down Parisa, to the own. That's right, interrupt here. Um, I'm just chairing for the Councillor Grimes here. Um, just, I'm just asking to keep it on topic to this item. Well, well, the the topic was um, there's there's an appeal, uh, and folks have appealed, and we're trying to sort of better understand uh, why it is that people are appealing um, uh, to the to the tribunal. They're they're just taking that route, uh, and uh, and I'm just giving an example of of an appeal in my ward. Uh, that has that has that has occurred. Well, several have happened, but uh, but referring to this one specifically, and I'm just trying to um, understand uh, that process better. Maybe we should be asking, um, you know. And and I guess the answer I'm trying to get is, um, yes, counselor, we believe that that's in part the case. Then then we maybe we should be asking uh, the province uh, to uh, take a look at the uh, at the planning rules uh, and. Uh, ensuring that the rules Question. 
uh, is there a question? Yeah, the staff question there, is, Paul, yeah, yeah. Shouldn't we should we be asking um, the province um, to change the rules so that communities, uh, neighborhoods, uh, have an opportunity to have a say uh, in development? Because under the under this process, there's absolutely no say whatsoever in terms of um, you know how neighborhoods uh, get changed and built up around them. Through the chair. Uh, that, that, would, that would be the question. The vast majority of, of applications do not end up at the uh, OLT. Most go through a normal process at the city and are approved by council, unless there's site plan approval, which is delegated to us. But in terms of uh, this scenario here, I'm, I'm fairly confident it relates to timeliness. The recess, the council election, plus our own timelines, are, are, are we cannot report on fine unless we come to the June meetings there won't be final reports until next winter and so this just uh, preserves their interest it doesn't mean that the community still won't be informed we will ultimately bring a report to council with request uh, a request for directions report those reports eventually are public there are always opportunities for either us the department and or the councillor to chair a, a meeting in the community to discuss an appealed matter, that option is always still there. So I, th I think there's still opportunity for residents to be informed and be part of a process, but it, it is currently permitted right now to appeal under these processes. No, 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 and I, and, I, and I understand that. So, so am I to take by your answer, I don't, want to, I don't mean to put words in your mouth, uh, but that the democratic process elections are a bit of a nuisance for developers. Is that is that is that what we're talking hey, about, Councillor? I'm, I'm going to have to yeah. I'm going to have to bring this to an end. We're we're getting a little off topic here. Okay. Um, any any further questions from committee? Seeing none. Uh, speakers, Councillor Grimes. Um, so I'm going to move the supplementary report with their staff recommendations, but. You know, Ward 3, I don't have to tell um, my, my colleague on my right, uh, Deputy Mayor Holiday, is under siege with development. At Dundas Street, we kind of share that border. Uh, the developers are coming in like dominoes in there. And to me, this is just plain greed. I mean, the community wants to have their say. They want to have a public meeting, but they're not even waiting for the public meeting. We've got some major projects down in that area. The Christie Lands is now going to be a massive development. Uh, and, to, and to top this off there without uh, community input and go right to the uh, tribunal, to me, it's irresponsible. And you've got the Mimico Triangle lands, you've got the Sherway Secondary Plan lands, you've got Queensway, you've got Bloor Street, you've got the Six Point uh, projects going to happen there along with Dundas. It's, uh, those are same a few. These are major projects in Ward 3. We're the largest ward in the country now, and we're one of the fastest growing wards in the city. And these developers, to me, it's just plain greed. They have to take the residents input and then move forward. But uh, to me, uh, this seems to be happening more and more often. Our friends in planning are run off their feet. We had this debate at council a couple of council meetings ago where you know the solicitors are bringing these settlements to the last minute and councils really have a chance to even digest them or take them to the community. So um, it's concerning to me and I think we have to get uh, our friends in planning help in, in getting more planners in but because they are run off their feet with the amount of applications that are coming in, not only out here in the West, but uh, across the city. I remember sitting with Councilor Nunziata probably 10 years ago, and uh, you know I was getting a lot of development coming to Ward 6, and she was begging for development up in her ward. Now she's starting to get it. So I, I'm um, getting a lot of it. Now, but I remember you, you said, well, why doesn't happen to my ward? But now it's happening across the city. So um, to me, this is concerning that they're just uh, really putting a gun to the planning's head. And... Uh, you know, these applications are just coming in one after the other. So with that, I will, uh, those are my comments. Thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, any further speakers to the item? Seeing none, I'll bring it to a vote. Um, okay, yeah, go ahead. Hmm? On the su supplemental report? Okay, all those in favor? Opposed, that carries. Item as amended. Item as amended, all those in favor? Opposed, carried. Back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councilor Ford. Okay, we're moving right along. Uh, 316, 933 to 935, the Queensway Class 4 noise area classification. Councilor Ford, I asked you to take the chair again. I have a brief question to uh, Mr. Mizzy. 
Mr. Minzy, so this class four noise area classification, so the buyers, will they be aware of this, this noise? Um, is this written in the docs? So when someone's buying a unit there, will they know that this is happening next door to them? Is there some way to notify them before the buyers buy and then they find out that this noise is outside their window? Can you maybe comment on that? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, class four noise area classification means we're allowing for residential uses which may be subjected to more than average amounts of noise and mitigation measures have to be taken, like for instance, individual AC units or triple glaze windows. And part of this classification is that we will have advisement or warning clauses uh, registered on title, uh, put in the condo declaration and placed in um, occupancy um, agreements. So in short, yes. So a buyer's coming in, they're gonna buy a unit here, they're gonna see that, they're gonna know that what, what they're getting into. Yes. Okay, those are my questions. Thank you, Mr. Mizzi. Any further questions to the item? Speakers, Councillor Grimes? Uh, just happy to move the staff recommendations and I'm confident Mr. Mizzi will get that in those docs so people know what they're, they're getting into. Excellent, any further speakers? See none, all those in favor? Opposed, that carries back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, uh, number five, uh, non-residential demolition application 971 Western Road. We have a speaker, uh, Daniel Tepperman. Is it Mr. Tepperman? Sorry? I'm sorry, uh, 318 non-residential demolition application 971 Western Road. Uh, our speaker, Daniel Tepperman. Is Mr. Tepperman on the line? Not connected? Not in the room? Any other uh, further speakers on the item? Seeing none, Councilor Nunziata. Okay, I do have a motion that I passed on to staff. Okay, that uh, approved the application to demolish the vacant non-residential two-story building with the following conditions. Uh, hoarding be installed to secure the property once the demolition work is completed to reduce graffiti and to beautify the streetscape the applicant is in collaboration with the council's office will commission a mural for the hoarding and all debris and rubble be removed immediately after demolition and the site to be maintained any holes in the property are backfilled with clean fill um, so I'm approving that they did get a, an engineer a structural uh, report that uh, the building has to be demolished now there is the, the uh, EM 31.5, which is uh, they've applied for an official uh, planning and zoning amendment, and we're going to be having a community meeting on that. But because it's on a main street, it's important that, you know, we do have the hoarding up and to beautify it um, and uh, until um, the application goes through for the zoning. And I did speak to the applicant, and the applicant is fine uh, with the conditions. Thank you, Councilor Nunziata. So to be clear, you're not moving one or two in the report, you're moving your own up there, correct? There was a, a recommendation one refuse, number two to approve, but you, looks like it. With the, condi with, yeah, with the conditions. So that's a separate altogether. Yeah. Is that right, Nancy? Yeah, so, but she's not, she's not moving one or two, she's moving her own. Well, I'm moving two to approve it. Then what my motion is. So it's two plus yeah. what you've got yeah, on the screen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, number two with an addition, right? Just want to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Are approved? Okay. Yeah. On Council Nunziata, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thirty-one point one five. Deputy Mayor Hall, are you ready to deal with this yet? Okay, so temporary road closing of Business Avenue and parking regulatory amendments for the 2022 Canadian Open. Deputy Mayor Holiday, questions uh, of staff? No questions of staff, Mr. No Chair. questions of staff. Uh, Deputy Mayor Holiday, speak. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, may I ask the clerk to present the motion? And I'll explain it to my colleagues. Uh, so this motion asks to remove uh, the four streets, A, B, C, and D. Uh, so that Appendix A is better aligned with the map in Appendix B. And I'll just back up for a moment and explain to my colleagues what this report is. Uh, as, um, as many of you are aware, the RBC Canadian Open is uh, once again coming to the City of Toronto, which is really exciting. Uh, this is a world-level 
sporting event that will be viewed around the globe uh, by hundreds of millions of people. Uh, and it's exciting because it's Canada's national golf tournament. And that's happening in Ward 2. Uh, the purpose of this report is to facilitate uh, some of the technical work that has to go into the production of this event. So this, the, the largest piece of this report uh, allows the closure of Islington Avenue at the end of May and at the start of June. And it's accompanied with a very long technical report about how the traffic diversion will work. And that's a, that's a big deal in our community, but so is this particular event. And, uh, and a very exciting event for golfers all across the country who will be competing in a national championship. Um, I can say that a tremendous amount of work has gone into this report uh, between uh, City of Toronto staff, uh, both in the transportation services area for this particular report, but also just with the production of the event across the city of something of this size. And I, I think this is the largest thing we've seen since pre-COVID. Um, I will also say that Golf Canada has put an enormous amount of planning work, and you can see some of the technical background work in this particular report. Uh, so I, I hope you will support this. It goes to City Council, uh, but, but this is a, a very exciting event. Uh, I hope people get out and enjoy golf in the city, enjoy the concert that goes along with this, and I hope you'll support my technical amendment. We just want to just deal with a, a very long list of streets, and I think a couple of streets escaped it from previous versions uh, into this one. Um, one big change from the previous report that Council approved that because the golf tournament got interrupted by COVID is a lot of the parking has moved off-site uh, into northern Etobicoke in, in areas that are farther away. So spectators will get to park farther away and be bussed in. The previous report um, dealt with uh, parking within the neighborhood. So, so the, it's a different plan. It's a, an exciting plan. And I, you know, I think this is a good news story for the City of Toronto. So with that, I, I hope you will support this, and I hope it has a, uh, a smooth trip through City Council. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Holiday. All in favor of the amendment? Opposed? Carried. Items amended. Recorded vote, please. All those in favor of adopting the item as amended before you, please raise your hand. Councillor Nunziata, Councillor Ford, Councillor Grimes, Councillor Holliday, Councillor Perusa, that item carries unanimously. Thank you. And I believe that's it, right? Got the bills? Do we just need the bills? And I can't get it here, so. Just while we're waiting for the bills, I'd like to thank our awesome staff for getting us set up. I think we got a different look in here today, but thanks for getting us all set up to come back. So thank you very much. Uh, Deputy Mayor Holiday, you're closer to that screen. You want to read the bills? Yes, Mr. Chair. That the Etobicoke York Community Council pass and declare as bylaws bills 309 to 314 and 345 prepared for the April 19th, 2022 meeting 31 of the Community Council. All in favor? Opposed? Carried? One sec, give us the next one. Is that the next one? Let's test Councillor Ford's eyes out. Councillor Ford? I just got glasses, actually. Um, uh, that the Utopia York Community Council pass and declare as bylaw a confirmatory bill to confirm the legislative proceedings of the Utopia York Community Council Act and their delegate authority at meeting 31 on April 19th, 2022, with 2020 vision. Very good. Shall this bill be passed and declared as a bylaw? All in favor, opposed, carried. Motion adjourned by Councillor Peruzza. All in favor, opposed, carried. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.